Nathaniel Hawthorne published the Scarlet Letter in 1850. Before getting to the narrative proper, he presented readers with a 50-page preface in which Hawthorne recounted the circumstances surrounding his own public humiliation. After their victory in the election of 1848, the Whigs charged Hawthorne with trumped-up accusations of malfeasance while he held the position of administrator here in the Salem Custom House. The charge stuck. Hawthorne received the letter of dismissal on June 8, 1849. Hawthorne's reflections on the daily routines of his fellow civil servants in the Custom House invited his readers to wonder whether that job was wrong for him from the start. Rather than engaging with Hawthorne or with their surroundings, his co-workers followed the example of the elderly inspector who appeared lacking in every human faculty except the appetite required to take up the task of consuming his next meal. A tenderloin of beef, a hindquarter of veal, a spare rib of pork, a particular chicken, or a particularly praiseworthy turkey, which had perhaps adorned his board in the days of the elder Adams, would be remembered while all the subsequent experience of our race and all the events that brightened or darkened his individual career had gone over him with as little permanent effect as the passing breeze. Hawthorne shared the day-to-day -day stupefaction of his colleagues until the day he imagined himself visited by apparitions of steeple-hatted Puritans. Included in the procession of these stern, dark-browed revenants from the discontinued past was Hawthorne's own ancestor, John Hathorne, who had condemned women to death during the Salem witch trials, along with John's son, who had inherited his father's persecuting spirit and made himself so conspicuous in the martyrdom of these witches that their blood may fairly be said to have left a stain upon him. Hawthorne's involuntary recollections aroused his desire to undertake public repentance for his ancestors' misdeeds. I know not whether these ancestors of mine bethought themselves to repent and ask pardon of heaven for their cruelties, or whether they are now groaning under the heavy consequences of them in another state of being. At all events, I, the present writer, as their representative, hereby take shame upon myself for their sakes and pray that any curse incurred by them may be now and henceforth removed. Hawthorne would soon discover the instrument with which to realize his aim of public penitence. While rummaging through debris from the Puritan past that had been preserved in boxes here in the attic of the Salem Custom House, a gold embroidered scarlet letter suddenly caught his eye. From the moment he fixed his gaze upon it, Hawthorne felt weirdly responsive to this artifact from Puritan times that seemed the outward expression of a sensation coming from the innermost precincts of his own psyche. I happened to place it on my breast. It seemed to me, the reader may smile, but must not doubt my word. It seemed to me then that I experienced a sensation not altogether physical, yet almost so, as of burning heat and as if the letter were not of red cloth, but red-hot iron. I shuddered and involuntarily 
let it fall upon the floor. In the scene that followed this discovery, Hawthorne fantasized the ceremony of symbolic investiture conducted by the ghostly apparition of his antecedent in office, surveyor Jonathan Pugh, who had written the account of the Scarlet Letter, Hawthorne had found in the parchment that accompanied it here. Hawthorne recovered his vocation as a storyteller through his need to retell the story of the Scarlet Letter that had come to him from a discontinued Puritan past. When he narrated the Scarlet Letter, Hawthorne attempted to remove from the letter of Puritan law its accursed power to make such dreadful pronouncements, even as he wrote with an imaginative force that evoked another social order into existence. Did Hawthorne's tale written by a citizen from somewhere else succeed in undoing the Hathorne's ancestral curse? Thank you.